Hey guys, hey Bob, hey crew. So hey, let's talk about food for a little bit and the food that you're eating this week. You might think of food as fuel and no surprise there because that's the way we're always told to, fuel your body, right? Get the best fuel that you possibly can. But I want you to think about your car for a little bit and what would happen if the only thing you paid attention to is fuel. Never paid attention to your tires, never paid attention to your brake fluid, brake pads. What about those belts? Oil. Oh man, can we just forget that stuff? Everything that goes into the car is just fuel. Forget about all that other stuff. Don't even clean it. What's going to happen to your car over time, right? See, your body's the same way. If we're thinking of fuel, we're thinking about a small part of the food that goes into our body because energy lives in your cell. And I want to say that again. Energy lives in your cell. You don't even have to take my word for this. Just go and look up A. TP or adenosine triphosphate and you'll open up a world of knowledge and information about how energy really works in your body. But the ATP molecule that provides you energy never leaves your cell. All you have to do is provide the chemistry for that molecule to blow up and rebuild itself and blow up and rebuild itself. And if you provide that chemistry, which you're doing for these four days, you'll find that once you get past carb withdrawals, that you'll find energy that just never never ends. And I want to tell you a little bit about how this works. It works through four food groups, but it's not the four food groups that you're used to thinking of, and it's not macros, right? The four food groups are what? Dairy products, grains, blah, 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 blah. This is government mumbo jumbo for how they're going to spend their money on subsidies. When we think of macros, though, and we're thinking of proteins, fats, and, and carbohydrates, we're thinking a little bit closer to how the body works, but we're ignoring the fact that there are 97 building blocks for the body that we're aware of, and likely many, many more that we haven't even discovered yet. And I want to share with you four food groups that are going to provide those building blocks for your body and the energy that you need to fire it, okay? The first food group we're going to talk about is dark leafy greens. Dark leafy greens are a special class of carbohydrates. They are carbohydrates, but we class them separately because they contain 85% of the nutrient building blocks you need for the strongest, healthiest cell that you can possibly have. True story, if you eat nothing but dark leafy greens, you can reverse heart disease, diabetes, and any number of other things. Because 85% of the building blocks you need for a strong, healthy cell and a robust immune system exist there. So we put those in their own food group classification dark leafy greens, get these every day and get lots of them. Then we put fibrous vegetables into their own classification. These two are a special subset of carbohydrates. But even though they're carbohydrates, they don't digest easily. They're very fibrous. These are things like broccoli, green beans, peas in the pod, and things along those lines, cauliflower. These are things that when you eat them, contain fibers that don't digest easily, that instead scour out your intestines, keep your colon clean, and a clean colon is a healthy colon that will do a body good, both physiologically, and we're learning more and more as time goes on, mentally, psychologically, emotionally, a clean colon has so many benefits to your body that this group of carbohydrates has to be pulled out into their own classification. So food group number one, dark leafy greens, get lots of them every day. Food group number two, fibrous vegetables, get at least two cups of these a day, one at lunch and one at dinner. And then the next two things we're going to classify are all of the other carbs. What are all of the other carbs? Well, listen, every plant is a carbohydrate. I'm going to say that again, every plant is a carbohydrate. So I want you to think about school, when you went to high school and you had five elective classes and one or two, or excuse me, five required classes, one or two electives, okay? This is the way we're treating carbohydrates. You have some required carbohydrates in your leafy greens and your fibrous veggies, and you have two electives every day. Those electives can be any other plant. They can be grains, nuts, um, root vegetables, you name it, any other plant, and get this, dairy. That's right. Dairy is something that your body uses as a carbohydrate regardless of the protein that it contains. Nuts are something that your body uses as a carbohydrate regardless of the proteins that it contains.
okay? So all of your other carbohydrates go in the third group. Two servings a day, don't get carried away. A serving of grain is a half a cup cooked. A serving of nuts is equivalent to seven almonds. A serving of fruit is equivalent to the size of a medium apple. So let's not get carried away on what we're gonna call a serving of carbohydrate, right? Nut butter, two level tablespoons. Honey, butter, two level tablespoons. Okay, got it? And your fourth food group is high quality proteins. Listen, some of you may be vegetarian and that's cool. This can all be worked out in a way that serves a vegetarian mostly. But there are some nutrient building blocks that you cannot get anywhere except for meat. But Belden, I can take a pill. Listen, your body is not biologically designed to even know what that pill is. And when you put it into your body, you may get some benefit from it, but you will not get the benefit that you would get from that nutrient where that nutrient is found. In nature, the way we've been consuming it for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. It is important to get the highest quality proteins if you want to have the complete set of nutrient building blocks in your body doing its job, okay? So let me tell you a secret about the elective carbohydrates and proteins. You've got to keep them balanced. You want a small protein for breakfast as part of a small breakfast containing that one protein, okay? Egg is awesome for this. Other proteins work also. When you get into lunch and dinner, you want all four food groups, dark leafy greens, fibrous vegetables, and you want your carbohydrates and proteins in balance. If you up your carbohydrate, you better be upping your protein because these two things need each other in your body. If you up your protein, you better be upping your carbohydrates and you better be stopping when you're full. So listen, if you follow these few simple guidelines, you're gonna find that you fill up faster. You don't remain hungry all through the day. You have a lot more energy to do the things Bob's asking you to do. Oh, and when you leave here, you're gonna have a lot more energy to do the things you wanna do because that is the energy that pushes you and makes you do stuff. So you better have stuff on your calendar to use up that energy, okay? I wanted to share these things with you today. The food that you're eating at this event is designed to serve your body in the ways that we've just talked about. And the closer you adhere to it, the more you're gonna benefit physically, psychologically, emotionally, as you go through the remainder of this event and if you take this with you the remainder of your life. You can find a lot more information at nutritional.fitness. No .com, no .net, none of that weird stuff. My company is called Nutritional Fitness. Why don't we just make the website nutritional.fitness? Cool, eh? All righty, you guys have a good time, and I hope this helps you out. Take care. We love you.